Like many small counties in Kentucky, the community spirit in Clinton County is strong. Clinton County is a small county in South Central Kentucky. It is a wonderful place with um, outstanding people who love their families and really care about the children and want to make the future a better place. I was the greatest place on earth. If you break down, somebody's going to stop if you're on the side of the road. If you meet somebody, somebody's going to wave at you. If you're a stranger or not, they're going to throw a hand up. That same community spirit led civic leaders to confront an uncomfortable fact. Clinton County ranks about 100 out of 120 in the county health rankings in Kentucky. Um, that means we're the 100th least healthy community, and we recognize that. We saw that in our kids. And if we don't change something now, we're going to be going to the funeral home for kids a lot younger. Most of the diseases that are um, ravaging our population and shortening our lifespan, we can trace those back to obesity. So we feel like if we can start young and start with our children and teach them healthy habits and healthy lifestyles, that when they grow up, they won't be faced with obesity and all those chronic diseases that go with it. And so the Clinton County Healthy Hometown Coalition was formed. The coalition came together as um, Aristotle's thinking, that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, that we have a lot of great groups that do a lot of great things, but if everyone's going to the same goal and their resources aren't combined, you're not going to accomplish anything. And once we get everybody together and on the same page and combining resources, we've been able to do some great things. Good morning, boys and girls. It's time for us to do our Take 10 exercise. Because school is such an important part of a child's life, many of the coalition's strategies are school-based. To increase physical activity, they have incorporated movement into the regular classroom through a program called Take 10. They connect the activity up with whatever lesson they're teaching in class. When I give you the addition problem, think about it. And then we are going to so there are many different ways that you can, can put activity in the classroom and research has shown that's not only good for the child's body, but it also improves their mind and improves their academic learning. Now, when the timer starts, we're doing this. Everybody watch me. You're going to jump that block you were on the first time. They've also added physical activity to their morning and after school daycare programs. Instead of playing seated games, the students are up and moving around. Changing taste buds is also on the agenda of the Healthy Hometown Coalition. I think my biggest concerns about the overall health of the students in Clinton County is helping them understand what good nutrition really is. We offer several different kinds of fruits and vegetables every day trying to make sure they know that they can get one. Our county is a high poverty county and we have lots of folks who struggle from day to day just to find enough food to eat. In addition to serving a nutritious breakfast and lunch to students at the school, they now serve supper as well. Last year we started it in October and we served about a little over 6,400 meals for the year for supper. In the summer, the school continues to address food insecurity by meeting students where they are with a mobile feeding bus called the Bus Stop Cafe. What we try to do with our mobile bus is figure out which area of our county has the most students gathered in one location, and then we get the bus to that location. We feed them breakfast, and when the breakfast run's all done, we turn around, we load the bus back up, and we go back out with the lunches and, and feed them lunch. Okay, who was next, Caden? Can you hop up there for me? What's going on today? Perhaps the most significant change is the addition of school-based health clinics provided through Cumberland Family Medical Center. Our school-based clinics are just like our primary practice clinics, but they're in the schools. So it's about accessibility. It's about the kid that has a cough and needs to see a doctor, but the parent can't take off work. They can get those immunizations that they have to have. It's about having health care right there where the child is majority of the time. Step up just a little bit. There you go. The clinic is also addressing obesity prevention. 
So we've created a policy for our school-based clinics that any time a kid goes into a school-based clinic, their BMI is assessed and they're counseled That's on really physical activity and nutrition and appropriate health maintenance. Uh, what do you do at home for exercise year -old? But the coalition's efforts don't stop at the school. They sponsor events in the community throughout the year, like this one at the public library. When you're attempting to change a culture, and change the way that people live, that's a very long process. And it has to be something that's consistent, that's ongoing, and it has to be a message that children hear everywhere they go in the community. We have already seen several successes with this project. Um, one of the ones that's very close to, to my heart and a lot of folks' heart in this community is we built a new playground. There was a playground before. It was very old. Um, it was not very safe and it didn't really um, entice the children to come out and be active. What was really successful about that in addition to getting it done was we had community volunteers. Over 50 volunteers that showed up to do two days of very intensive labor to put this playground together for our children because they thought it was important. I think you'd have to probably go to Cincinnati or somewhere to see one any better with one structured like what we have there. When it's warm, there's somebody on it all the time. Even of the night, uh, you go out there of the night, late at night, and there'll be, there'll be kids and parents out there uh, playing on it. My seven-year-old loves to play at the park. She has been to two different <laughs> birthday parties there. So she's so excited because all of the community is sharing in this new playground equipment. You know, as a kid that's seven years old, that's just the neatest thing in the world. <laughs> The coalition has been able to hire a full-time coordinator who, among many other tasks, presents a weekly column in the newspaper, often profiling local people who've lost weight and improved their health. It's just kind of a support. I mean, it shows people, you know, in the community that they're making changes. Well, I can make a change, too. Yeah, I've, I've noticed kids eat better. It seems like they eat better. I've got a granddaughter, and she still does McDonald's, but she does apples and water to drink, no pops. I notice uh, a lot more people uh, out and about being active and this, our school is eating healthier and everybody eating healthier. What makes me feel good about it is I know that it's a real need here. I mean, I know there's a lot of kids that have childhood obesity. I know there's a lot of kids that have high BMIs here because I've done the BMIs myself. And just seeing them start to make, you know, changes on what they're doing, how much they're eating, their water intake. I know that we're making an improvement. For me, the coalition will be successful when our kids, this is just their lifestyle, that a healthy lifestyle is their way of life. It's nothing different, it's not out of the normal, it just is who they are.